cardiovascular deaths went up in 2020, in part because people were afraid to go and seek treatment. So our Nine Health expert, Dr. Powell Coley, joins us. She, of course, is a cardiologist. So let's go over this again. What are the signs people need to know in case they were experiencing something just like this? So important to talk about, Tom, and I really like to use the analogy of, of a rainstorm. So there are two types of symptoms you ought to be aware of. One are those sudden onset ones, and the others kind of sneak up on you. So the sudden onset one is sort of being caught in the rain without an umbrella. They're not subtle. Usually people feel chest pain or chest pressure. That's the most common symptom. Sometimes it can radiate to the jaw, to the arm, to the back. Sometimes people can feel short of breath, sweaty, nauseous. It is important to note that women can have more atypical symptoms. So sometimes women just feel symptoms like heartburn or fatigue or feel under the weather, but don't necessarily have that elephant on their chest sensation that some of the men do. But regardless, the symptoms are not necessarily subtle and they're not something you can distract yourself from. So that's that getting caught in the rainstorm. The other types of symptoms, however, that you ought to be aware of are the ones that slowly sneak up on you. So this is people who you know, used to be able to walk a mile and now they get a little more winded walking half a mile. So progressive shortness of breath, swelling in the ankles, getting a little tightness in the chest when you exercise that gets better when you rest. That's more of that storm looming on the horizon. Both obviously very important. The first, of course, being a life-threatening emergency to call 911, but the second, for sure, check in with medical care. And we talk about the complications of doing all this in the midst of a pandemic. The American Heart Association last week released a report saying heart disease is still likely to remain the number one cause of death in the world, but they say in part due to COVID-19. What does that mean? Yeah, that's exactly right. So there's two effects that the pandemic has had on heart disease, morbidity and mortality. The first, of course, is the direct effect of the virus. Now, we know the virus has receptors on the heart muscle as well as the blood vessel. It can cause inflammation of the heart muscle. It can cause clots in the blood vessels. It can even potentially cause long haul symptoms like damage to our nervous system that regulates our heart rate and blood pressure. But the second are the indirect effects of the pandemic. So, of course, the most obvious one being what we've discussed, which is that people were afraid. The coronaphobia prevented them from seeking medical care, and they turned a small heart attack that could have been fixed into a large problem with chronic health sequela. And of course, also the pandemic has made us more sedentary, made us eat worse, you know, made us less likely to get outside. And all of these effects have led to weight gain, obesity, diabetes, all of the other chronic conditions associated with heart disease going up, and therefore a bigger impact on heart disease, morbidity, and mortality. Yeah, when you talk about diet and exercise, I was gonna ask about the most important things that we can do for our own heart health, things that, that we know we can do. I imagine diet and exercise are right at the top. They really are, and I have some good news here because you know it's depressing to hear all these all these things. But 80% of heart attacks and strokes are preventable, according to the American Heart Association. So we really are empowered with these lifestyle changes. So in terms of diet, you want to keep that sodium below 1,500 milligrams a day. You really want to limit the sugar. Of course, you want to follow a low-fat diet. A Mediterranean-style diet is the one that's best for preventing heart disease. Exercise. You want to get 30 minutes at least five days a week of getting your heart rate up. So that's not walking your dog, Tom. That's actually jogging or getting on a bike or doing something that gets your heart rate up. And then, of course, you want to control those risk factors like blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, and all the others that we know can lead to heart disease and stroke. So, so as a doctor, you say today, instead of being at work, I should have carried a golf bag 18 holes today, and that would have been the proper thing for me to do today. That's right. I can write you a prescription for that if you'd like. See, this is exactly why we have you on. Uh, Dr. Paolo thanks as always. Just a reminder to everyone that February is Heart Health Month. We'll be continuing this conversation and my prescription, I hope. Thanks.